guys, your boys Arcotics here, bringing you another commentary slash tutorial, uh, another video for you guys, kind of talking about how to be proficient and efficient with the Scout class, how to take your game to the next level, talk about all the tips and tricks that I, uh, I will teach you so you can get to the next level. Talking about a few things here, basic, intermediate, and advanced techniques to be a effective scout on the battlefield um, so we're gonna start with the base the super basic stuff which is settings so let's get go ahead and get right into it uh, vehicle stick sensitivity I have it set to 70 I think standard is 20 as well um, I don't play in vehicles very much so that doesn't really affect me that much soldier zoom sensitivity now this right here is what affects your ADS your aim down sight sensitivity um, I think it's standard set to 100. I've moved it down to 60, and I will show you why in a second. Soldier sprint is press. I think that's standard. Uh, double tap forward to sprint. That is currently it's off standard, and you t I turn it back on. So you double tap forward to sprint on your left stick uh, if you're playing pa uh, PS4 or Xbox. Now, uh, steady scope, vehicle weapon zoom, and soldier weapon zoom. I have these all to hold because I hate toggling. Pressing makes it so you toggle these things and I don't like that personally so um, I like to hold it that way I have full control of my sticks now control schemes I have set it's when it's default the biggest the only thing you're gonna see different here is if you look down at the bottom right uh, part of the screen you're gonna see melee attack is set to R3 or if it's on uh, PlayStation it's also R3 and then B uh, or circle on PlayStation is set to crouch I set that I, I flipped that. The reason being is because when you're able to run and crouch, um, you actually perform a slide, and it, it allows for more control for you to go prone, um, and you don't have to worry about if you go prone that you can get shot at the side. You have to take your thumb off the, the, the crouch button to then move it over to your um, aiming button. So you don't want that. You don't, you don't want to have to go from a, a toggle for crouching and then have to move it to a stick that you have to use to aim. That That's too much motion and that's enough for you to get killed. So I've set mine to alternate. Advanced settings. Now these right here are very specific to each person. You can use mine if you'd like to, but these are the ones that I'm used to, so it may not be best suited for you. So stick dead zone, um, I've set to 10%. That actually is set to 22% at standard. 22% dead zone means how much you need to push your stick for it to make an effect for you for actually the controller to recognize it and then send that signal to your Xbox or PlayStation. Now I have mine set to 10%. 1% I actually think is too sensitive because you don't get uh, any little movement will cause the stick to move and sometimes that can throw off your aim especially for sniping. So 10% for me has worked out just fine. And the rest of these you guys can take a pause and look at some of these sensitivities if you do want to uh, to copy mine so these are I don't really use most of, much of these other scopes five six three two five like I don't really use it two 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 times is what I definitely use for my ADS uh, for my pistols and for my uh, iron sight rifles but everything else 3.5 and 4 I'll use for scopes and then 8 and 10 X I'll use for scopes so you guys want to pause at this point to copy this down you can um, other than that I'm gonna keep moving on so other than that biggest thing that you want to take a look at is I have uniform soldier aiming off turn that off reason you don't want that on personally for me like I said I like to customize my aim every um, every weapon needs to be different for me every type of sight needs to be different so I have that off instead of it being a standard aim and coefficient I have set to zero what this basically does is uh, if if the uniform soldier aiming is enabled for whatever reason this basically makes it so it's not and I change it to zero um, with Battlefield 4, I think I had it on, and I think that made a difference. So I turned it off in this game, and I set it to zero, just in case, some for whatever reason, it gets toggled back on. So, okay, cool. So that's done. Gameplay. Now let's go over some of the things. For basic um, HUD information, I have HUD on, of course. Crosshair vis visibility is set to 100. Crosshair colors are white. That's all standard. Now the biggest thing that I changed was the hit indicator. Now this is extremely important. This Let me tell you why it's very important. The hit color... Your, your your ability to read and see that you've killed the target takes too much time rather than seeing the hit marker. So let me explain what I mean. Let's say there's three targets in front of you, okay? And they're all spread apart evenly. Let's just say left to right, right to left, does not matter. 
Let's say you start shooting at the first one. Well, if your hit markers are all the same color, you will have to wait till you hear the audio confirmation um, or read the text to make sure that the player is killed. Now, the reason you don't want that is because you want to know that, hey, that person's dead. Now, in Battlefield 4, there was, it, if, to my recollection, there was no audio confirmation that the person was dead. All you saw was after they died, you got a little bit of a delay, and then they came up with a text saying enemy killed. In this game, thankfully, they put an audio confirmation that the person was either headshotted or shot to the chest, and you even get hit marker sounds. But I have my hit color to green, my headshot color to orange, and then kill color to red. Red, when I see red, I know I can continue progressing through my targets and keep moving on. I'm having to worry about it. And the damage based shape means if you get the headshot, it's going to make it a little bit more broader hit marker to let you know. Um, other than that, these are really big for minimap. I've set my uh, flight zoom radius, anybody that's in the air, I would set this uh, much higher uh, instead of having a, a lower setting. I don't fly much, nor do I get in vehicles much, so I just set those up because I know, hey, if I ever hop in a vehicle, I want to be able to see on the minimap people around me. Now, two biggest things that you need to make sure are on. Oops. Let's go back down there. Okay, right here. Minimap size needs to be to higher than 100%. I have set mine to 150 with the on foot zoom radius of 225. So what happens is the map, if you look at my screen, I don't know if it's actually up because the game hasn't started. No, it's not. Okay, so the map is much larger uh, on my screen. The typical map, it takes up, I would say probably about 10% maybe a little bit less of your screen. I've increased that to about 20 to 20, yeah, roughly about 18 to 20% to give me more visibility. And then the uh, zoom allows me to see further out. Okay, other than that, uh, video. So field of view, I currently have mine set to 75. This is really down to personal preference. Whatever you like there, you know, whether you want standard at 55 or all the way up, which I think is 105 or 110. Motion blur to zero and then ADS field of view to off and also weapon depth of field I put turn that off as well the reason you want these all off is because it causes when you render and or use a, a sniper the depth of field is not set back to standard which makes it harder to aim um, at least I have found it harder to aim M motion blur off as well because I don't want any sort of motion blur it adds uh, a little bit more takes a little more taxing on the resources of your Xbox or your PlayStation I have that set off to zero and then weapon weapon depth of field so when I'm ADS I don't want that extra depth of field effect now obviously it does look cool but I don't want that because I want to be able to see targets outside of my peripheral other than that let's go ahead and get into the next segment also guys make sure when you're going through your settings um, and the last thing I'm gonna talk about is the gameplay advance guys the gameplay advance is very important make sure you check this because some of these things are going to be on what i would recommend for sniping in general just have anytime someone snipes turn off all aim assist aim assist auto rotation and slow down these will be default on turn these both off if you do not your shots will go uh will be off when when targets get in front of your scope what these do is they allow the target to draw your scope towards the target let's say i'll give you an example Let's say you got two targets, and one target you're perfectly scoped over, and the second target goes in front of the target that you are already aiming on or trying to aim on. That target that runs in front will pull your scope and make you draw off the target you were originally shooting at, causing you to possibly get killed by the target you are already engaging, and versus the one who's running past and not paying attention to you. So turn off both auto rotation and slow down because it gives you a full control of your scope full control of your sniper and you won't have to worry about that as well as it's much easier to hit multiple targets in a row or multiple targets simultaneously as well because there's none of that going on. Alright guys, let's go ahead and talk about uh, choosing a weapon. Now the cool thing is there's so many weapons that we get to choose from um, in Battle for One so far we're going to be getting more in the future with the next DLCs. Now let me talk about the sniper rifles that I personally like. Um, but I'm going to go through them uh, objectively and what they're useful for. Uh, the biggest ones is I'm not going to use anything that I don't, uh, I'm not going to talk about anything that I don't personally use and have a good review about because if I don't haven't used it, I can't give you a fair uh, review on the weapon and how I would use it. Now, uh, let's go to the Russian 18 snipe, 19, 1895 sniper. 
can't talk today uh, 1895 sniper this sniper is really really good for medium medium to closer range engagements uh, bullet velocity is pretty good I would say I think it's about 750 now with the the uh, 1895 sniper you're gonna want to engage targets from 60 meters uh, and further 60 to 100 meters is the sweet spot very very nice sweet spot to play a little bit closer to the objective and it has a five round mag which isn't the greatest but it does fire pretty quick 56 uh, rounds per minute fastest of the bolt action snipers that um, have a long range scope so with that uh, the infantry now this is the iron sight variant also very good i like this weapon as well definitely more for your runner gunners people that have to play up close um, just like the sniper except it's unscoped it doesn't have an optic now the couple of these weapons the uh, Gewehr 19, uh, or it was it was the 1898, but it is the Gewehr 98 in the game. Marksman is one of my favorite weapons. I love this weapon. The reason you would you want to use a marksman scope over a sniper scope, and I'll I'll give you pros and cons for both. Marksman scope doesn't give you glint. Only thing is the marksman scope um, does give you a kind of a different ADS feel. So the Gewehr 98 sniper, my personal favorite as of now. I like the Gewehr 98 Sniper because it's, you can use 8 times optics. Uh, so I personally have mine set to 8. You can do 5, 6, or 8, or 10. I personally like 8 times because back in Battlefield 4, that was the magnification I used primarily on all my rifles. Uh, so 8 times scope on the Gewehr 98. Very, very nice. Oops. Uh, this weapon is a 80 to 120 meter one shot kill to the upper chest. So the sweet spot in the upper T-zone, which is between the shoulder blades and above the, uh, the stomach area, is going to be a one-shot kill at 80 to 120 meters. Really, really nice weapon to engage targets, especially when you're playing operations or conquest. When you're heading towards a flag, you're able to play a more support role for your team. So you can pick off a few targets um, and take out your targets before your, your teammates or squad get there. Now, one of the biggest things that the Gewehr 98 has over any other weapon in the game, it has the fastest bullet velocity at 880 meters per second. Very, very good sniper to use, and I personally like it. It's my favorite. Infantry variant, iron sight variant of the sniper, so it's not optic. Same rules apply. Uh, five round mag, 50 rounds per minute. Still has a fast bullet velocity. Very great for close quarters. Um, you will want to have a good sidearm. We'll get into those next. Now, the SMO Lee, the short magazine Leon Fold Mark, Mark III, one of the best weapons of uh, World War I. Um, this one and the Gewehr 98 were the, some of the most high, highly used. Now, the Mark III Marksman comes with the Marksman scope that I showed you from the... Uh, so, the SMO Lee Mar Mark III Marksman, a great weapon, has the, uh, the Marksman scope. Once again, the Marksman scopes have between a 2.5 and a 4x optic. So, what that means is... It's a little bit shorter, kind of like your ACOG scopes from Battlefield 4. Uh, so it's a little bit closer range, but still a good uh, sight to even take off targets um, outside of 100 meters. Great rifle. Now the one that thing that the rifle has over a lot of the other rifles is its 10 round mag, which makes it favorable for aggressive sniping. So if you like to play a little bit more aggressive, this may be the sniper of choice. The one thing that is really nice about it, it has a 40 meter to a 75 meter sweet spot so it's a little bit sh a shorter range than some of the other rifles that have a 40 meter uh, sweet spot this one's only uh, 35 but it still has a 10 round max so you're giving out that extra five meters for an extra five bullets which does come in handy in close quarters carbine and infantry variants uh, these are basically a um, it has a sight on it so a rear sight um, and then a front sight to kind of help with uh, pinpointing kind of like a RDA, uh, R, um, a red dot sight or a um, a uh, holographic sight back from Battlefield 4 and then your infantry variant is the iron science variant now if you notice the carbine is actually shorter doesn't really make a difference um, but the only thing is your hip fire goes down when you go uh, down to the infantry but the carbine has a better hip fire the very 95 great gun has the fastest uh, rechamber speed rounds per minute at 67 and also has a pole bolt so one of the first pole bolt rifles of the world war one era cool thing is you can base the ads and fire off shots without leaving your scope and continue to track your target and one of the reasons why i like the marksman and i have a great amount of kills with i think about um 
or 36 service stars. Yeah, 36 service stars with this gun. Great weapon. I like it. It's a fun weapon to use. The only thing that you lose with it is the bullet velocity. So you're giving up bullet velocity for a higher damage drop. So it maintains more higher damage over distance as well as um, you get the fast bullet uh, rechamber speed. M1903. Now this gun, I personally don't use a ton, but it is a effective weapon. The reason it's effective is it has it hits hard. It's meant for the longer range engagements, 100 to 150 meters. Now the only challenge with the M1903 as that the hitboxes are much smaller in Battlefield 1 than they were in Battlefield 4. So what that makes for is a more challenging one shot to the upper T zone since the hitboxes are much smaller. So the marksman variant just like others 2.5 to 4x and then the sniper which is a 5 to 10x scope also comes with a bipod. Martini Henry Used to be one of the best guns in the game. Some would say it was even overpowered, uh, but now it is since it's been nerfed, not used as high as highly or as widely as it used to be. I have about 32 service styles with this. I like this weapon. It was really really good for close quarters, uh, for getting those one shots between 30 and 80 meters. So you had a 50 meter sweet spot range, which was really nice. But now since they've nerfed it, uh, it has the same hitboxes as. All the other snipers isn't as effective but still does the one hit kill between 30 and 80 meters if you can hit that upper t-zone shot so great and then lawrence of arabia smle is just like the uh smle infantry however it just is a little bit blinged out with some gold and the engravings on the side now sidearms uh, what we're going to go over the sidearms here make it really quick the two that i prefer to use is the farmer stop and the mars automatic i'll tell you why Farmer Stop is kind of like your uh, G17 or G18 Battlefield 4 um, or Battlefield Hardline. You can fire really quick. You can spam the trigger and allows you to pop off all eight rounds very, very quickly. Uh, it does enough damage to kill, I would say, about two people per, per mag uh, unless they're lined up. And obviously, you can kill more. But it is more for a, a spammy, kind of quick response weapon if you're getting shot and you miss a shot or you hit a shot and you need to switch to your sidearm and just pop off a few shots without ADSing um, with your sniper with your with your uh, pistol gets off those shots really really quick now the Mars automatic is the other favorite of mine my personal favorite that I, one that I use mostly this gun is like the Desert Eagle Battlefield one um, at one point it was the most powerful handgun in the world and it is a hammer you use this gun it does a three shot kill if you hit upper chest um, headshot, I think, is a two-shot, so it is a straight beast of a, of a weapon. If you hit with a sniper rifle with a 80 hit, let's say upper T zone inside or outside the sweet spot uh, zone, you'll get a one-shot with the Mars Automatic as long as you hit them in the upper chest. Other than that, guys, the two uh, gadgets that I personally use and have used are the two default ones, which is the flare gun spot and the K bullets and I find these the two most effective don't see any uh, need for most of the other stuff uh, I don't really use any of the other things on here flash the transparent periscope sniper shield don't you ever let me catch you using a sniper shield if you play with me what a sniper shield does is it makes you a sitting duck number one a stationary target number two and number three it only exposes your head so if someone was is smart enough to hit you in that window they're gonna get a headshot I would say eight out of ten times a couple other times you'll hit at you in your neck or your shoulder depending on the angle but most of the time you're gonna get headshot so if you're playing with me or learning from this tutorial do not use the sniper shields um, trench periscope makes you a huge target the trans periscope, what it does is it gives you the same scope glint as the longer range optics. However, it gives you two um, two glints instead of just one. So it makes it much easier for you to spot uh, and I would not recommend using it. And then the other, these are tripwire bombs. These are kind of like your claymores from Battlefield 4 and they are uh, tripwire bombs. Essentially, it's exactly what it, what it says it is. So if a target or an enemy runs past, it's either going to have a heavy explosive, a gas, or an incendiary. So, um, other than that, the melee weapon is up to choice. There's so many to choose from. I don't know why I don't have Sawtooth enabled. There we go, Sawtooth. And all these weapons you can just choose from based off preference. They all kill differently. And I personally like either the Sawtooth or the Hatchet, just the animations. So, other than that, let's go ahead and get into the sniping. Alright, guys. So, what we're going to do is I'm going to do some basic things. 
we're going to talk about basic scoping and centering your screen, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a target on this one. So I'm going to draw. Okay, that's our target. Now I'll draw one a little bit further up. Perfect. Okay, so we have a target. Basic scoping, okay? It's the most simplest form of sniping ever. What we want to do is focus on centering your target over one of these dots. So you can choose any dot. I, you know, let's, let's choose the top one because that's the one I'm... So the center of my screen is always focused towards the dot. What I'm doing is I'm strafing side to side and trying to keep that, that, top, circle, that top dot in the center of my screen. So when I ADS, I don't have to move my scope very, very far. See how I'm pretty close to it? Trying to center. Pretty close to it. That was wrong, almost spot on. Almost spot on. So what, what I'm trying to do, like I'm showing here, is how to center your screen. What I would recommend doing is just going from side to side and then going kind of like in an arc and keeping your screen centered over the, the dot so that way you can be extremely close to it when you scope. Now, keep practicing that and then what you want to do is focus on if this is a target moving your crosshairs directly over the center always focusing on going to the center now I'm gonna go ahead and ADS off target and move it to the center of that target right there that little the little dot on the screen the little dot on the barn and just do this slowly get used to lining that up if this is the middle of a uh, of a headshot or a T zone of the of the enemy you want to be able to get there as fast as possible and then you want to get faster faster fast faster and faster okay very simple very simple concept this is basic scoping, right? Bare minimum basics to continue to get faster at scoping in on your target and centering over the target the way you need it to be. So I'm going to show, um, after we get all the basic stuff done, then I'm going to talk about um, intermediate stuff, but as well as show you some gameplay of all these in action. Okay. Perfect. All right, so with basic scoping, you want to give yourself some extra range. So continue to practice uh, by moving around area. Ooh, a little bit further than I was thinking. Moving around the map and work on centering your target over it. Mil multiple angles. Give yourself some distance. Continue to aim over it. Even give yourself some obstacles like this ledge. Run up to it, be able to aim over that. That's basic scoping right there. Perfect. Awesome. All right, guys. So um, when you, when we do quick scoping, quick little tip. I almost forgot. When you are quick scoping, make sure you stand still when you do it. So for example, let's say you're going side to side. And there's a target a little bit further away or even close up when you go to fire make sure you take your thumb off the left stick to stop your movement then zoom in then fire All right now it's obviously not that slow right but it is a way uh, the way to make your bullet go straight so the way it would look more like it's more like this a little bit more organic okay so I'm only stopping to take the shot. So I'm literally, as soon, and the way to do it is almost like you're, if you can imagine looking at your controller, when whatever you use the ADS, you basically rock your thumb off the stick and move your index finger to the, uh, the, the left trigger to ADS. And as soon as you do that, it's like you're almost like you're rocking your controller forward or you're rocking your finger, your hand forward to ADS your scope and not move your stick so basically how I do it is as soon as I hold down the left trigger 
my left thumb comes off my controller so I cannot move and it allows me to have as much accuracy as possible. So the way we do it, like this, stop, split second, fire, and then as soon as you fire, woof, you can move as soon as you fire. But if you move while firing, it causes bull deviation. Straight shot's a little bit more challenging. Reason being is kind of what we talked about in quick scoping, when you move, if you move while firing, it causes bullet deviation. So what we want to show you is how you can still strafe while ADS down your scope and still hit 100% accuracy. So what we're going to do is I'm going to create another mark on the wall. Perfect. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to strafe and learn how to keep your scope over the target while strafing. All right, perfect. Crosshairs are looking good. I want to kind of want to deviate, deviate a little bit. Perfect. That's what you want to do. So since when you strafe on AD, on um, aim down sights, you move quicker. And as soon as you aim down sights, you're much slower, much easier target to hit. So I'd recommend if you're fighting off a sniper in the distance, don't AD, don't aim down sights unless you know for a fact that you're going to have the better shot on them otherwise good chances they're gonna get you because you're moving much slower and much easier to hit at that point so here's this now this would be best used let me show you let's run over here I actually have that back the reason why um, strafe scoping from right to left is more effective than left to right is the way the scope is oriented on the rifle so since it's on the left side it's much easier not expose as much body on your shot when you go to fire because the scope's on the left side. If you're over here, my for me to get the full scope over, all the way down to my left knee is exposed. If I'm over here, I need to get a shot off. Just the very actually, this is not even a good representation. Let me actually show you real quick. Right here, half of my body is not exposed. Okay, unlike over here, my entire body is exposed for the scope to be ready to go. So it's not as good to strafe scope when you're on coming from a left hand side to the right than from a right hand side to the left. So one thing you guys have to recognize is you're more exposed when you go this direction from uh, you're trying to shoot off a building to the right than if you are to the left because you don't have to expose as much of your body. So, pro little tip there. But when you strafe, strafe shot, the way you want to do it is as soon as you see the target, fire. Okay, as soon as you see the target, fire. But you need to stop. As soon as you go to fire, you need to stop for a second. Take your thumb off the stick. Fire. Oop, I hit the camera. That was a little too close. I want to use the winning mechanic. The men need orders. Alright guys, now I want to talk about um, drag shots. These are needed when playing with any sort of optic weapon and you're off target and you need to move the scope over your target as fast as you possibly can. And I'll be, like I said, once again showing you some in-play, in-game footage of what this looks like. Now, so what ends up happening lots of times, especially when you play a little more aggressive with the scout, is you get put in positions where you're not looking in the correct direction and there's a target. Let's say you're looking this direction. 
but your target's on your left. And so what you end up doing is you're looking typically on your peripheral or 45, and the target is moving in, in either, you know, uh, diagonal to you, perpendicular to you, pulling away from you, and you see a target and you want to be able to drag scope them um, when they're a little bit closer. So this is more of a, you got to be quick to do this, but as well as even if they're further away, let's say they're about 100 to 200 meters away, to be able to drag over the target. And this is goes in conjunction with learning how to center your screen or center your crosshair over the target set. So what we want to practice is going from back and forth over this target, back and forth. All right, and then you want to fire. So right, I fired right over it. So you want to keep working on that. Back and forth. And then just get faster and faster. When you go left and right, see how close you can get to the center of this target. So you just want to go slow at first. Slow first. Slow at first. What this is teaching you is you're going to get yourself muscle memory on um, when you see a target. Learn how to center it over, okay? And you can even start, you can go diagonal to it. So you can go like this. So what you want to do is just get faster and faster. You can center over the target almost every time you press it hard, press it quickly. See how, I mean, I'm getting pretty, I'm pretty getting pretty dang close to the center of that target. If you were to slow this down, you always center over the target as fast as you can. Okay. Quicker. Getting quick to the center of that, that target. Back. And forth. So what I'm doing is I'm centering my target as fast as possible. And that's using, utilizing the form of drag scoping and scoping to get that target as black as possible. No, to get that target as dark as possible because I'm shooting the same spot. Okay? Drag scoping, that's what you need to do. Practice slow, and then you can get a little bit further away. Can Return go that to far. the combat area. TDM. Go a little bit further. And then keep working on going faster and faster as you continue to hit the center spot. Perfect. When you're near some uh, some cover, what you're gonna use, you're gonna utilize that cover to still hit the target, but utilize your cover to give yourself another chance. Let's say you're getting shot at. Um, suppression, for example, is very strong in this game. And you're going to utilize that cover to basically fend off the suppression and give yourself a chance to shoot back without being suppressed. And the only way you're able to do that is if you utilize your cover. So, for example, what a snapshot would be something like this. Okay. <clears throat> right there. Pop up. Take your cover. Well, okay, your target. Now, it's actually you can find a better spot because you want to be able to use. There we go. A little bit better. Uh, no. Move! Oh, here we go. We're going to use this barrel. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to shoot this small over here. Perfect. Say so that's the whole, that's the target. Okay? So we're going to use a snapshot uh, effect or snapshot tactic. What you do is you pop up, fire a shot. Okay, you're behind cover. Clear your screen, fire. Clear your screen, fire. And then drop back down after you fire. It's your harder target to hit. Now, obviously, this is light cover, so you can just shoot through that. But let me, let me give you an example. Let's say you're a wall. You have a wall right here. Pop over that, or a rock, or some sandbags. This is sandbags right here, so you can pop over that, right? And even since this uh, battlefield has a peek over uh, mechanic, you can peek over it, unpeek over it. These are all ways to snapshot right here. Okay, so you peek over targets, or peek over uh, uh, the the uh, the cover, 
and you're able to center your screen over the target and take a shot and kill them. Okay. okay. Perfect. So that's a snapshot, and I'll show you what that looks like in game. All right, guys. Uh, one of the other things uh, that with with quick scoping. One of the other things with quick scoping that you have to do is what's called a pop shot. Now, this is the most skillful version of, of uh, quick scoping. The reason it is is because basically what it means is you have centered your screen over the target. So let's say you're, you've done all this, right? And instead of having to drag your your scope over the target, you have centered over the screen by centering, centering your screen over the target without having to adjust the scope at all. So this is what makes it more challenging because... Lots of times you're in the middle of battle, you're not going to have all the time to, oh my gosh, let me center perfectly, and then let me let me make sure I'm okay, and then, and then I'm going to pull the trigger and, and zoom in and pull the trigger. No, that, that doesn't happen. You don't really have that time and that luxury to lots of times when you're engaging targets. Now, what this is, it, this is like when you get close enough and you know for a fact that you're going to hit the target without any sort of adjustments, and let's say the T-zone runs between here and here, and then you do that right there, okay? What you're gonna do is let's say, oh my gosh, there's a guy right there. That's the right shoulder. That's the head. That's the chest. That's the right. So when you pop shot, your focus is on getting out of the shot as quick as possible. So as soon as you can see the target in your scope, you're firing. You're not gonna spend time adjusting. You're not gonna spend time doing all this stuff and trying to center over the target. You know for a fact when you ADS all the way that you're gonna hit on the target each time because you're scope even though it has a little bit of sway it's still gonna hit over the target of the hit of their hitbox to get a hit it'll be a kill shot or a 80 hit that way you can take them down and swap to your pistol which we're going to talk about next so let me just show you what that looks like so let's say you're running this way and fire over the target fire over the target fire over the target okay came out of bullets oh perfect Alright guys, the next thing I want to talk about is swap shots. Now this is a very effective form uh, of uh, playing aggressive, and I'll tell you why. Because if you hit a target, and in this game, unlike Battlefield 4, where it was a one shot to the chest, with uh, as long as the target didn't have defense, what it was it's called defensive perk um, that negated that, but it was a one shot to the chest at between zero and twelve and a half meters with sniper rifles in Battlefield 4. In this game, that is not the case. No matter what. Uh, it is not a hundred percent damage up close with any sniper rifle uh, in the game period unless you hit the headshot so in this game if you hit in the t-zone which is what's the easiest to hit when you're forced to be quick um, is you only receive an 80 health hit so it means you need, you need to finish them off with a pistol or a, uh, a melee weapon or a grenade or something like that up close now what we're going to be talking about is what we call the swap shot so what a swap shot looks like is like this. Let's say this is my target right here. Okay. So what we're going to do is fire. Swap shot like that. So you basically fire one round of your sniper bullet, of your sniper. And then you switch over to your pistol. So what this allows you to do is be quick. Let's say you hit a target. Let's say this target's running over here. And you see him. And you swap. I do this. Every time I notice that I'm not getting that red hit marker that we discussed earlier, swap to the pistol. Now, if they're further away, you can typically take more than one shot with the sniper. But if they're close up, I would say close enough to kill you with their, their rifle, you definitely want to switch to your pistol and finish them off. 
Now, one of the things I would tell you is unless they, ha if they're moving side to side from you, I would not ADS your your pistol unless you are very confident in your shot. What I would do would be hip fire. So let me just show you what that looks like. So I hit him like that. And sometimes you can spam multiple shots. Let's say it's one shot here. Typically, with the Mars, you can get a couple shots off before the target actually hits you or kills you, and you can kill them. Um, and so, one of the things, like I said, it's a good practice to do would be to what's called swap shotting, especially if you're playing much more aggressive. And this is actually a little pro tip here. It's a great way to stop your drag scope. So, let's say you're playing and you're, you're dragging your target, uh, your scope over your target because they're close range and you're even zooming in off target. You can, in conjunction, drag scope, then sw shoot, then swap. And what the drag scope uh, swap shot does is allows you to stop your shot more precisely because you're not going to continue to keep your thumb on the stick. So, for example, right there, it's a drag scope and then a swap stop. It's a great way to be more accurate when you're dragging over the target or a drag swap it's a great way to do that perfect all right guys so a slide shot what that kind of looks like is this if we're going to go ahead and slide and we want to hit this target right there let's say the target's over there and you want to slide turn hit the target like that perfect slide there's even a drag scope in conjunction a sentry case is available near your location. Be quick, stealthy, and agile. While being hard to hit with your target. A sentry case is available Perfect. near your location. A little glitch there. Awesome. A little slide shot, and that's what I would do. Just keep practicing back and forth. You can even do it at different angles. Come at them like this. More. I'm wounded! Medic! Medic! Yeah, medic. Just kidding. Now the last thing guys would be no scopes. Now these are much better for up close engagements. No scopes are more of a desperate move to uh, to kill a target that's close enough in your hitbox. I would say within five to ten meters, uh, you can go for a no scope. Not always effective. Obviously, let me just show you the spread. isn't that bad spreads not too bad so up close no scopes not that bad out, out here we hit here 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 almost looks like a smiley face Out of face. <laughs> All right, last thing, guys, is long shots. Now, I can't uh, give you all the details on long shots because it's going to come down to playtime, feel, and using the rifle of choice. My personal favorite is the Gewehr 98. The reason I like the Gewehr 98 is the fast bullet velocity, so it has a great, um, great shot for long, long distance. It's all going to come down to feel. Now, I could show you some footage of some longer shots, but once again, getting long shots right is going to come down to you practicing and playing based off your target. Now, I'm going to give you, based off my experience, if you're going to use the Gewehr 98, whether it be the Marksman or the Sniper, when you're out to a only time you're going to aim above the target, target's head is going to be... Hold on, who the fuck? All right, here we go. All right, so anytime, only time you're going to be able to uh, aim. <laughs> uh, so when you're using the Gewehr 98, let me, let me go back to it. When you're using the Gewehr 98, the the one thing is, for example, I'll give you the stats on this one. Then. When you're 150 meters, um, 
or in 150 meters in you're gonna only aim um, at the head outside of 150 meters you need to start aiming just above the head barely enough so for example let's shoot this barn door back here and I want to hit just actually let's hit the branch I want to hit this branch right here I'm just showing them we're probably about this is about 100 meters away Hitting the bolt, I'm hitting the bolt perfectly on the branch because it's stopping. Okay. Two of our soldiers remain. Over here, enemy, take it. Two of our soldiers remain. Oh, 